many who came from long distances, especially my brother. And it, it is really fabulous, I mean, to look out at this room and to see all the different people from so many different parts of, of, of my life, and people I don't know, who we were too, who came from, you know, the other, the other invitees to this event. It's really extraordinary. Your, your presence and your support, and the, and the support of many others who wanted to be here tonight but couldn't make it, uh, is really a great tribute to me and to Bali in and of itself. It's also a great tribute to be sharing tonight's recognition with Councilman David Webrin, who understands Bali's mission and without whose support, Bali would not be where it is today. So I congratulations to David on being the first Bali Fellow. tonight with those amazing wise women, Judy, Claire, and Amy, whose passion, poetry, and constant commitment to justice are always galvanizing. Tonight's event would never have taken place, though, without the vision and enthusiasm of Liz Abzer, the co-founder of the Bella Abzer Leadership Institute, that this group is gathered now in this restaurant and overflowing with great energy, great excitement, and great people belies the enormous effort that went into making this event happen. It took a lot of work, and as many of you know, Bali does not yet have a staff. So thank you, Liz, and the board members, and other volunteers for joining us today. I am deeply honored to receive the first Bella Award bestowed by the Bella Absent Leadership Institute. As Gail said, to many of us of a certain age, Bella was an inspiration. Though she was handling major civil rights cases in the South in the 1940s and serving as defense counsel for entertainers during the McCarthy witch hunts in the 1950s and organizing Women's Strike for Peace in the 1960s, Bella probably came into focus most clearly on our radar screens with her election to Congress in 1970. She was bold, she was brash, she was colorful, she was unmistakable. We grew to maturity around Bella as the movement to end the war in Vietnam morphed into the women's movement, and Bella was our hero through it all. She spoke truth to power in a way no one had before. From the 1970s to her death in 1998, Bella was a powerful force for change, first nationally and then globally. She challenged, she questioned, she researched. This is the lawyer speaking. She navigated the nuances of procedure and she creatively used rules to advance the issues she championed. She built coalitions. She was, as, as Gail said, a brilliant strategist. She calls her friends, as I understand, at 2 o'clock in the morning to brainstorm tactics, which of course did not make her the most popular person in their household. But as a result, Bella got things done. Many of the rights that we take for granted today are the product of Bella's insight and perseverance. Yes, she lost some elections along the way. And yes, she ruffled plenty of feathers too. But she always stood up to ad adversaries with courage and conviction, intelligence and wit. She was outraged and optimistic all at the same time. She was truly an idealist who, until she died, never gave in and never gave up. And on top of all this, she was a superb poker player, a stellar singer, and she loved to get down and party. I was fortunate to know Bella and to share time with her and her daughters towards the end of her life in her house in Sag Harbor. I watched a famous not-quite-detente lunch with Betty Friedan on Bella's porch and watched Bella's legendary performance as Marlena Dietrich in Guild Hall, East Hampton. Most stirring, though, was a day on the beach when Bella, who loved the ocean, was having difficulty getting out of the water because there was a great incline from surf to sand and her legs were not strong enough to conquer the hill. There were many women on the beach that day and they, as well as many men, realizing what was happening and without words, rose up from their towels as a cohesive movement and formed two lines, one on either side of Bella, and then grabbing her arms, carefully passed her up the slope from one, one person to another until Bella was safely out of the water and back on her spot on the beach. Remembering that scene often brings tears to my eyes as it was such a mighty and spontaneous outpouring in the most unexpected location of the fondness, admiration, care, and respect that people felt for Bella. Bella's legacy 
is the model she set for the kind of leadership we desperately need today. To transmit Bella's legacy to girls and young women of today and tomorrow is Bali's mission. What better contribution can we possibly make to the world than to encourage and nurture courageous women leaders to take on their world with a big heart, deep soul, lively intellect, passion, creativity, and humor. There are many girls and young women today who never heard of Bella. Well, no doubt some history will be passed on to the Bali trainees. Teaching history is not our goal. Our goal is forward-looking. It is to provide opportunities to girls and young women to expand their horizons and help them recognize and honor their convictions. We want to help the Bali girls develop the confidence and skills to build on their strengths, be that through debating competitions, public speaking, internships, mentoring relationships, or all of the above. And then we want to support them as they move on and apply their emerging leadership skills in their schools, communities, and eventually in their jobs, and maybe even into politics, if that's where their passions take them. And all of you here tonight are helping make that possible. Bella, as some of you know, had a religious grandfather. He didn't have a grandson to take to synagogue, so instead he took his beloved granddaughter every morning. The men gave Bella dirty looks since women weren't allowed. <laughs> but she stood in the corner and no one stopped her. She has often said, it was those mornings that taught me you could do unconventional things. Bali strives to provide the tools and inspiration to girls and young women to do unconventional things, to maintain a healthy skepticism and to constructively challenge the status quo, since no meaningful change comes without a challenge. And even without the rhetoric of a campaign season, we know that leaders are those who bring about change. As Ted Kennedy once remarked about Bella, if you look at why things are achieved, it is leadership, and that really is personality. Bella understood very well the character of herself, and she played to that. She was unique, she was boisterous, she was flashy with her hats, all of which reinforced her presence. And she used her presence and her enormous ability to move a cause, whether it was women's rights or ending the war. Bella knew the rules. She knew how to try and move a system that doesn't move. She stirred the house in such a way to, to push her view, irritate, antagonize, cajole, persuade, inspire, and ultimately lead. I look forward to a day in the not too distant future when someone speaking of the Bali girls tells us how terrific, uh, tells us, speaking of one of the Bali girls, tells us how terrific she is because she has a unique and powerful presence. She knows the rules. She stirs those around her to understand her view and is able to cajole, persuade, inspire, and lead. That will make me very proud, just as I am tonight, to be the first recipient of this award in the name of such a remarkable leader of the 20th century. Thank you.